the Earth, our home, a round sphere, a ball, floating in space. So if Earth is a ball, how do map makers flatten out the Earth to create maps? And even more perplexing, how did the ancient navigators make their maps? How were they able to figure out that not only was the Earth round, but how to draw out the shapes of land masses and oceans without hot air balloons, airplanes, and satellites. In this adventure, Finding Your Way, we'll explore all of those questions, and you will learn how to use a map and a compass. You will learn how to find your way. Navigation. It's the art and the science of finding your position on the Earth, marking that position on a map, and then using that information to help you find your way to your destination safely. Today, every cell phone has a GPS receiver and we're able to quickly and accurately determine our location and then look up directions to our destination over the internet. It all happens seamlessly and it usually works without failure. However, for the majority of the time that humans have been navigating, GPS was not available. Electronic systems were not available. And an error in navigation could often mean the difference between life or death. Before we can learn how to use a map and a compass to help find our way, we need to understand what exactly a map is and how is it different from a picture. Here's a picture of North America. It should look familiar. Now, here is a map of the same area. What makes the map a map? It shows the same location. The shape of the land is the same. The map is a map because it provides additional information that allows a navigator to find his way. There are lines of latitude and longitude. These lines provide references of position, which allow the navigator to determine distance traveled and direction traveled. There are markers, markers that show the borders between states, the location of cities, and natural features such as lakes, rivers, and mountains. All of these tools of information make the map different than the picture. Additionally, the map has a compass rose which indicates which direction is north, east, west, and south. These are the parts of a map. Now let's travel back in time and discover how maps got their beginning. What you're looking at now is called the Imago Mundi, more commonly known as the Babylonian map of the world. It is considered the oldest surviving world map. It dates back to between 700 and 500 BC and was found in a town called Sippar in Iraq. The carved map depicts Babylon in the center. Nearby are places like Assyria, Elam, all surrounded by a salt sea forming a ring around the cities. Outside the ring, Eight islands or regions are carved into the tablet. The map is accompanied by a cuneiform text describing Babylonian mythology in the regions depicted on the stone. Let us now travel forward into the future, about a hundred years, and let's look at the Greek philosopher Anna Zamander, who died in the year 546 BC. Anna Zamander is credited with having created one of the first maps of the world which was circular in form and showed the known lands of the world grouped around the Aegean Sea at the center, which was all then surrounded by ocean. This image is a reproduction of what the map would have looked like. A complete copy of the map does not exist. Notice how between Anna Zamander's map and the Babylonian map, the center of the world revolves around the most important objects to the societies that created them. To the Greeks, the most important part of the world was the Aegean Sea. The Aegean Sea was their superhighway to connecting them with the rest of the world. The Aegean Sea enabled trade and commerce. 
the carrying of goods and people across lands over the ocean. If we were to draw a map, like Anna Zamander did here in Northern Virginia, we might put Braddock Road as the center of our world, or perhaps the I-495 Capitol Beltway, which surrounds Washington, D.C. Both of these roads can take us to a lot of different places, a lot of important places in our local area. So in that way, we can understand why the Babylonians put Babylon at the center and the Greeks put the Aegean Sea at the center of their maps of the world. Around the same time that Anna Zamander was drawing his map, other Greek philosophers and mathematicians were making careful observations of the sun, shadows, and other physical properties of the planet. As early as around 600 BC, Greek scholars like Pythagoras and Aristotle had determined that the planet was actually a sphere and not flat. During Christopher Columbus's time in the late 1490s, educated people carefully studied knowledge passed down by the ancient Greeks. So the idea that Christopher Columbus sailed west to prove that the Earth was round is a myth. However, Columbus did find the Americas, a landmass that, although it had likely been explored by the Vikings earlier and was populated by Native Americans, had been unknown to Europeans at that time. In those times, explorers like Columbus provided critical information to map makers, called cartographers. By measuring their approximate speed and keeping a careful record of the course they steered their ships, they were able to plot out the contours of land and their approximate locations on the globe. Like the ancient map makers, cart cartographers continued to shift the center of the world on their maps. Today. The prime meridian is depicted on most maps as the center of the world. A meridian is just another name for a line of longitude. Longitudinal lines run north and south from the North Pole to the South Pole. They mark distance traveled east and west in increments of degrees. There are 360 degrees in a circle and likewise 360 degrees of longitude around the Earth. Latitude runs opposite of longitude, running east and west. The equator is the line of zero degrees latitude that cuts the Earth in half into the northern and southern hemispheres, like a belt around a pair of pants. You can remember which is latitude by thinking that the lines of latitude are like the rungs of a ladder, which you could climb up. Together, Latitude and longitude provide a grid system that we use to specify exact locations. However, agreement on where those lines start from and how they are numbered is a relatively recent development among map makers. Defining a prime meridian is a comparatively recent development. Until the beginning of the 19th century, there was little uniformity among cartographers as to the meridian from which to measure longitude. But it didn't matter much because, at the time, there existed no method for determining longitude accurately. Ptolemy, in the 2nd century AD, measured longitude eastward from a referenced meridian two degrees west of the Canary Islands. In 1493, Pope Alexander VI established a line in the Atlantic west of the Azores to divide the territories of Spain and Portugal. For many years, cartographers of these two countries used this dividing line as the prime meridian. In 1570, the Dutch cartographer Ortelius used the easternmost of the Cape Verde Islands. John Davis, in his 1594, The Seaman's Secrets, used the Isle of Fez in the Canaries because there the variation was zero that being the magnetic variation. Most mariners paid little attention to these conventions and often reckoned their longitude from several different capes and ports during a voyage. The Meridian of London was used as early as 1676 and over the years its popularity grew as England's maritime interests increased. The systems of measuring longitude 
both east and west through 180 degrees may have first appeared in the middle of the 18th century. Toward the end of the century, as the Greenwich Observatory increased in prominence, English cartographers began using the meridian of that observatory as a reference. The publication by the observatory of the first British nautical almanac in 1767 further entrenched Greenwich as the prime meridian. An unsuccessful attempt was made in 1810 to establish Washington, D.C. as the prime meridian for American navigators and cartographers. However, in 1884, the meridian of Greenwich was officially established the prime meridian. Today, all maritime nations have designated the Greenwich meridian as the prime meridian, except in a few cases where local references are used for certain harbor charts. So how do modern cartographers flatten out the Earth to make 2D maps out of a 3D sphere? They do it using a technique called map projections. Have you ever made a shadow puppet? Notice how on a flat surface the shadow of my hand is a near-perfect copy of the actual shape of my hand. However, as I project the shadow of this straight pencil onto a curved ball, Notice how the shadow bends around the curvature of the ball. Cartographers use projections just like the pencil shadow along the ball with measurements of distances to lay out lines of latitude and longitude on the earth. They then reverse that process like peeling the skin off of an orange to flatten out the image of the earth. This process results in distortions. This projection the most common type used in cartography is called the Mercator projection. It is useful because the lines of latitude and longitude meet at 90 degree corners forming squares. However, in the northern and southernmost latitudes, the shape of the land is stretched out showing an inaccurate representation of distance and size. You have seen what parts make up a map and how maps have changed over time. Have you ever been to the ocean and stood on the beach watching a sailboat sailing out past the horizon? If you have, then you would have seen the ship slowly fall below the horizon line until only the tip of the mast was visible, and then it would have disappeared right out of sight. The ship disappears because it follows the curvature of the earth. It is no longer visible in a straight line from where you are standing. This is just one example of how the ancient Greeks figured out that the Earth was a sphere and not flat. In this adventure, you will also make a map. You can choose to make yours of your neighborhood, school, or perhaps a small park that you enjoy. Before we can make our map, we are going to learn about compasses next.